Yo, I'm Nez, and I'm dropping another impromptu review on y'all. Um, and this time, what we're going to be doing a review of is the... Uh, bam! This is the Stone and Bean Triply Stainless Steel Cookware, the 12-piece set. Um, it's pretty much exactly what it says it is. It's a cookware set, so we're going to take a look at it. So let's go. You got the generic box right here. Um, stone and beam on this side. Nothing on that side, but a couple numbers, whatever that means. Same on the other side, stone and beam. Nothing on that side. On the top, you got your stone and beam with a label of some sorts explaining. You can take a look, read that for yourself. Multiple languages there. Made in China like everything else. There goes your barcode and some other stuff in multiple languages. So, uh, looks like, let's just try to flip it up and see if there's anything on the bottom. Looks like there's nothing on the bottom. Okay, so let's just get right into this bad boy. One single-handed operation. So just kind of bear with me if you can, please. You know what? I'm just going to... If it gets a little bit loud, please uh, bear with me. I have kids, and sometimes they just seem to know when I'm recording, and they start whooping it up for no reason at all. Okay. Now, these are... Try ply, which some people equate equate that to all clad. Now they're the closest to the all clad cookware without exactly being all clad. Now when you open it up, this is on top right here. You can read that. Some more stuff on the back. Basically telling you that um it's good for up to 500 degrees. It is dishwasher safe. Um you can use this in uh, other languages, just in case anyone, another language. Here, I'll, I'll scroll it down so you can see it for yourself. Okay, so basically, like I said, um, it would stand and it can go in the oven to up to 500 degrees. Okay. Here's a lid right here. Um, you can use it on a gas stove, electric stove, and an induction stove. So you're good, all three methods of cooking. Um, the lids are all stainless steel specifically, so they can also go in the oven. Whereas if it had been the clear top um, lids, I think the clear top lids are only, lids are only rated to like three or three, 350. But I like the fact that it sits up nice and high, so that way you don't have to worry about, it's less chances of your knuckles hitting the hot lid. So it sits up high, it's very sturdy. It's riveted on there. You got three little breathing holes there, which I think is good to let the steam out. So that way you don't have to worry about any pressure situations. And if you do want to pressure situations, you just, you know, throw some duct tape over that, you know, boom. Same thing with this one. Both of these look like they're the same exact size. Okay, pull that out. This is packed in very well here. Got a, uh, this got some weight to it. Now this definitely weighs, this definitely got some weight to it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the size of this pot, but you got this pot right here. Okay, see now, I just want to like turn to the bottom so you can see the bottom. Kind of got the stone and beam logo on the bottom there. Um, it seemed like it's pretty thick. Now the way these are designed with the tri-ply, which is similar to all clad, um, is that um, what it is, it's 80% stainless steel and 20% aluminum. Now, the aluminum conducts the heat the best, but aluminum obviously is uh, bad for people that, you know, when it leaches in your food. That's why they tell you that you shouldn't really uh, cook in an oven with aluminum foil. You should only use it just to wrap your foods, you know, up, but you shouldn't really cook in it. I mean, but there's no here or there. I don't know when we listens to that, but that's what they say. Anyway, so there's a layer of stainless steel, and then in the middle, there's a layer of aluminum foil. I mean, I mean, there's a layer of aluminum, I should say, 
and another layer of stainless steel. So it goes all the way up the sides. So that way you have even heating throughout the entire pot or pan. Um, a lot of pans just have just a bottom area that's covered with, um, that has the aluminum um, core on the uh, bottom. But these, they come all the way up the side, which is the reason why I chose these versus a, a different set that I had saw. Um, I like the fact that these came up, um, it came more up the side so that way it heats all around. And it, uh, it also, uh, um, the price is awesome too. So, um, okay, so there's the pot. Now here's the strainer pot here. You have a strainer pot. It looks like it fits inside one of the slightly bigger pots. Um, you could use this one or two ways when you cook your pasta. You could drain your pasta, do it now. Me personally, what I like to do is when I cook my pasta, I like to basically drain off the hot water, but keep it, not just drain it down the sink. And then I like to put the hot water back in the pot and then let the pasta sit in the strainer pot above the hot water. So that way, the pardon my uh, child there, like I said before, when they know when you're recording and they start yapping. Um, anyway, um, I let the pasta sit in the top of the strainer pot so that way the hot water underneath the steam comes up underneath it and keeps it moist so that way it doesn't stick together. That's just a little hack for you if you decide you wanna do that. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. Okay, here's a looks like this is an eight inch fry pan here same thing all all clad tri ply whatever you want to call it i mean they, they call this tri ply because um i don't know what constitutes the difference between tri ply and all clad i gotta look that up because um it seemed to me like it would be the same thing i would think maybe all clad maybe it's heavier gauge steel and aluminum um maybe that is the difference um, so, um, I'm gonna have to look that up, but, um, me, I think they're kind of the same. So there's your eight inch fry pan. Okay. Here goes a lid to one of the smaller, um, pots right here. You know, like the, it's like the world is against me right now. Everybody is make everybody and everything is making noise. My kids, they want to start talking. The freaking lawn people showed up next door to mow the lawn. It's just like, it's like they know. Um, this lid right here looks like, see it covers over that really well, but it's too big for that one, so. There's a lot of packing in here. They got a ring there, get rid of that. Got another pot inside here. This looks like the same size as the, uh, I'll just say lid, not pot. Looks like it's the same size as the last one. So again, with the three venting holes, stainless steel. And what am I? What I'm seeing is that these actually fit over the fry pans pretty well too. So in case you know you need to cover some spatter up or some splatter up. So I'm gonna be taking advantage of that right there. Try to keep down on the mess when I fry some chicken or something. And now we got our big looks like eight quart pot here pull this out i know the sizes of some of these but not all of them obviously the more common ones i know the sizes of this is definitely the eight quart pot this bad boy is nice so you can definitely cook some crab up in there. Not a lot, but enough. Some seafood, do a little mini seafood boil. Got the all clad, the uh, tri-plyness. I keep saying all clad, but I gotta call it by what it is. So what they're saying it is, is tri-ply. Got the tri-ply through, you know, throughout the riveted handles. Nice distance between the, t you know, the top of the handle and um, the actual pot itself. So you don't burn your knuckles off when you're trying to lift it off. Yeah, I definitely think that's gonna work. Okay, some more stuff here. 
it packed this pretty well, I have to honestly say. A smaller lid inside here. And this will probably go to that one small pot that I um, showed you in the beginning. That's over here on the side. Yeah, that lid definitely goes with that pot right there. Bong. So that's perfect for that. And this, this pan, this pot looks like it's slightly bigger than the other pot that I had. Uh, let's see. I don't know where I put it. Um, I got so much stuff here, it's hard to see what I have. Well, we'll get to it. Same thing. Um, I think maybe this is like four or five quarts, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what the sizes are. Okay. We're getting to the bottom now. Got your, see this is the pan that I like. This is one of the main reasons that attracted me to this. A nice fry pan with tall sides that you could throw a lid over, that you could fry steak with or something like that, do a nice sear on a steak with, and don't have to worry about all the spatter everywhere. This is what I really, really like right here. And it's one of the main reasons that attracted me to this specific set versus a different set, other than the fact that um, the uh, aluminum core comes all the way up the side of the whole um, you know pot and pan um, it's got the long handle on one side and it's got the you know the short handle on the other side so that way you get a good hold of it um, so like I said you throw a lid over it or you could throw one of those uh, steak pressing steak pressers over it to keep the steak the whole surface of the steak flat against the bottom of the pan however you cook your steaks bong fry some chicken in here whatever I'm trying to tell you this, this is it right here. That's the main reason why I got that bad, got this bad boy. And I think we're finally at the bottom of the box. Okay, we got our, I believe this is the 10 inch or 12 inch might be the 12 inch I'm not sure the exact size but um the largest fry pan it's a little bit bigger than that but like I said um, this one you could do you could also cook a steak in it. you cook a steak in any of these because they're all built the same exact way to be quite honest with you but um like I said I like that more specifically because it's set up with a tall size like a pot but it's short down so you can fry easily and this is just a straight up classic fry pan right here with the long handles and uh your tri plyness all around it nice and shiny durable it's got some weight to it everything here has a little bit of weight to it i've read in comments somewhere that someone said that these were pretty light now if you've had true all clad um cookware then yes i'm sure this will probably be light compared to that but compared to a lot of other cookwares that i've had like some of the t-file teflon and some of the um ceramic coated cookwares and stuff like that this definitely got some weight to it um so i have to say that this is gonna i'm sure this is gonna be a lot more durable than the other uh stuff so um um let me just uh, uh pause this video and come back and come back with a shot so you can see everything we got here hold on a second catch you on the flip okay we back in this is what we look like with everything intact here um, you got your two, you got your smallest pot, your medium sized pot, your strainer pot, your big pot, your small fry pan, your big fry pan, and your tall fry pan, all with lids that fit everything except for the fry pans. The biggest lid still doesn't fit the fry pan, but like I said, I have this one, so there's no need for me to worry about covering up that one. However, the regular size lid does fit over the small fry pan, which I don't get why they make it so the lid will fit that one, but not that one. But I guess they did it because they know it'll fit this one. So, and to be honest with you, and to be honest with you, um, this pan is just slightly bigger or wider, I should say, than this pan. So, I mean, 
it's just, to me, it's just an extra pan to cook with. Um, so I'll probably be using this one a lot more than that one because this one fits my needs more. So when we come back in on the flip side, um, I'm going to cook a little something. Don't know exactly what, but um, I'll figure it out to best uh, show how good these pans are. Maybe I'll actually make a steak and make it a steak recipe. So um, uh, catch you on the flip side. Okay, we back in. We got the stone and bean. Um, I'm making a, I decided to um, call up my daughter. She's half Spanish, and I get that uh, um, Spanish rice recipe. And uh, this is what we looking like. Look at that. Look how good that looks. Uh, Spanish rice with corn. Um, what I will say, and I'm also just doing some uh, some seared um, um, sazon chicken to go with it. Um, what I will say about these um, pots and pans is that they heat exceptionally fast. Normally, when you're cooking stuff like rice, um, the normal time frames that you use to cook rice, throw it out the window. Because the fact that these heat all the way up the sides instead of just on the bottom like it normally does, the heat, it's like it, the heat is going through the rice and in the water at all angles. Um, so it definitely boils the water faster and it definitely cooks the rice faster. So normally when you cook rice, it would take about, you know, 20 minutes or so, depending if you use, whether you use a rice cooker or if you do it on the um, stove top yourself. Well, with this, I literally cooked the rice um, in like 10 minutes. I'm not even joking. Like I put the timer on for, uh, you know, 17 minutes just so I can come back and take a look at it. I had the uh, fire down on simmer like I normally do so it wouldn't cook fast. Um, something told me just to check it at like 10 minutes. And sure enough, I went to check it at like 10 minutes, like all the water had, like the majority of the water had boiled off. Like literally the majority of it had boiled off. So I literally caught it just in time. So like whatever times you're used to cooking on your normal cookware with the tri-ply or all clad or anything like that, you know, reduce that time by like 30%, maybe 40% because your stuff would definitely cook faster, especially if you have the lid on it. Because, like, I caught this just in time. This almost burned to, and stuck to the bottom of the of the, um, the pot. Like, literally, it's, it's crazy. And as you see, you know, I got this cooking in, I got this cooking in canola oil, and the seasoning was just getting to the point where it was starting to burn up, burn a little bit, because, so you have to, it, I'm not used to cooking in tri-ply cookware, all clad type stuff. Um, so I definitely have to change the way that I've been cooking and uh, start, you know, babysitting my food when I cook for a while until I get used to knowing the cook times on this. So if you are that type of person who you've been cooking on regular stainless steel or, or a T, you know, T-fowl, non-stick cookware and stuff like that using your regular times, when you start using that tri-ply all clad, um, cookware definitely change your habits or you're going to be burning a lot of food and therefore waste, uh, wasting it out um, so uh, my next thing that I'm going to be doing um, is a uh, steak on this bad boy and I'm going to save that for a, um, a Nez up in the kitchen um, video cooking a steak in this bad boy so stay tuned for that video but as for this um, Nez uh, this has been the uh, unboxing and review of the stone and beam the amazon basics version of stone and beam tri-ply 12 piece cookware set i'm nez i put the links in the description where you can uh get this and i'm out this piece definitely cop it